This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hey guys, here we are at World Dog Expo in Secaucus, New Jersey. We are talking to Maria Alderford. Is this your first time here, Maria? Yes, yes, it's my first year here. Are you enjoying yourself? Yes, a lot. It's very fun. Tell us a little bit about your dog here. What kind of dog is she and what's her name? Sparkles is a Golden Lab Cross. Um, She's four years old. How did you uh, come together with Sparkles and how long have you been with her? I've had her since she was seven weeks old. Um, I've had her since, yeah, four years. <laughs> How does Sparkles help you? Sparkles is trained to pull my wheelchair. She can retrieve things from around the house. She can pick up her leash. She can do a whole bunch of stuff. And I hear from your mom, Colleen, that she does tricks also. Oh, yeah, she's, that's her like free time. We do lots of tricks and training, and just she loves to learn. So aside from working with you, she's also like your companion. She's doing tricks with you. So that's really important, I think, in her situation because it lets her be a dog. Do you agree? Oh, yes, absolutely. All right. So um, also tell us a little bit about your situation, if you don't mind, Maria. A few years ago, I got sick with Lyme disease and something called POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And I also have something called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which causes my joints to dislocate. So she helps me with all these things. I find it amazing that a dog could help you with all those things. It's a shame that we didn't have this kind of knowledge earlier. As I mentioned to your mom, my sister was handicapped and uh, only wish she were here today to have this kind of experience with a dog and the kind of help to have this wonderful experience at World Dog Expo. So, Maria, we really appreciate your time and good luck with your dog Sparkles. And we really appreciate the interview and have a great time at the World Dog Expo. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) No problem. Thanks, guys. World Dog Expo. Maria. What's up, guys? We are here at the World Dog Expo 2018, and I'm here with Stacey McCreary from the CSVCA. First of all, what does that stand for? It's the Czechoslovakian Volchuk Club of America. It's a mouthful. Yeah, no (laughs) chance I was trying to remember that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what that is? Okay. Well, we're a club, a breed club, for the Czechoslovakian Volchuk, which is a breed fairly new to the United States. There's about 200 of them in the United States. It was a breed that was developed in the 40s and the 50s. Russians crossed Carpathian wolves and German shepherds trying to make a border patrol dog. Mm. The durability of the wolf and the trainability of a German shepherd. And they, what they found was that they couldn't be trained to be aggressive on command. So it was kind of a, a failed experiment, mm. but they are excellent search and rescue dogs. And in Italy, they use them a lot for police work. Oh. So it turned out to be in our best interest. That's great. That's great. That's great that you're doing this for them and that, that you're raising some awareness about this breed and, and teaching people about them. We are. The fact that there is so few of them in the United States, it's important to us that the breed is understood because mm. they do look like a wolf and some people will automatically assume it's a wolf hybrid, which it's not. It is a purebred dog. It's registered UKC, fully recognized. It is in the process of being recognized by AKC. So we're here to educate and hopefully, you know, get people to know what the breed is about, not to be fearful of them, and to really enjoy them as much as we do. Yeah, yeah, that sounds really, really awesome. We can see over here, we're going to take a couple clips of them to show you guys, but uh, they are some beautiful, beautiful dogs, and they are purebred. That's very, very cool. It is, it is, because there is a lot of stigmas to a wolf hybrid, and so it is kind of nice that you have something that looks so beautiful, but it is a purebred dog. Yeah, I did a video on that once of uh, wolf dogs, and sometimes they can look a little scary, and you don't even know if you're living with one or not. So it's nice to, uh, you know, it's nice to get some more information out there about them. In fact, Volchuk does stand for wolf dog in Czechoslovakian, but because of the stigma of it, that we say Volchuk, which is the other word for it. Well, that's all amazing. So thank you, Stacey, so much thank for talking to so us for a minute. Much. And uh, do you have anything else you'd like to say to anybody about your organization? Just be sure to look for us on our website, Czechoslovakian Volchuk, and on Facebook page. We have a lot of followers on that. If you're interested in the breed, feel free to contact us, and we'll answer any of your questions. 
as I said, we are a brand new breed club, and so we're in the process of learning and educating. Thank you so much, Stacy. Hey guys, once again, here we are, World Dog Expo 2018. I'm sitting here with the legendary Joey Villani, great old friend of mine. We go back to the Nash Academy of Animal Arts days. Joey, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. We appreciate having you here. You know what? It's, been, it's so good to see you again. That's one thing I have to say. It had to be close to 30 years that, that we... You know, and I don't even want to go back to the last time, you know, that we were together 30 years ago. But it's funny because you went to the National Academy. And at that time, I didn't know that I was an instructor. I think I just groomed at the time I, when we were there. And I remember a lot of people of your class. It was a legend. It was a, you had like a legendary class, huh? We did. Our class was real special because I was like one of two guys in the class. It was all girls. And um, nothing, wrong with that. nothing wrong with that. As soon as I walked in and I talked to you guys, I was like, you yeah, I'm comfortable here. I'm good. There's not much competition, you know. And I remember you walking in. I mean, how old are you, Joe? You're a little younger than me, though, right? I'm 50. I'm going to be 53 in September. So. Right, we're the same age then. But I remember you. Yeah, no way. Get out of here. You look fantastic. Listen, as Joe said, he, you have no idea how good it is to see this guy. I have not seen him in 25 years. So, uh, yeah, yeah. At least. At least. Yeah. So, Joe, what are you working on currently? Uh, let's talk a little bit about your progress in, in the industry. A lot's gone on. I mean, as you know, I took over Nash Academy in 97. Um, I sold in 2008. I did some television work for Animal Planet, some radio stuff. I'm currently the grooming ambassador to Con Air Pet. I'm the CEO of Intergroom, which is, as you know, a big grooming, professional grooming event. And I'm one of the partners here at World Dog Expo. We're trying to do something a little bit different. We're trying to do a, um, it's almost like a, I don't even know what, it's an interactive sp- Sporting type show for the general public on steroids. That's the best way I can explain it. You know, we've carpeted, we've tried to make it a little bit more extravagant and a little bit more family friendly. That's what we're trying to do. You know, it's a beautiful thing. And again, we've just watched the progress uh, happen over the years. We've watched the industry unfold. Joe, did you ever think for one second that it would turn into what it has? You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I think I did. I mean, because I couldn't understand. When I got involved in 1974, I was nine years old for John Nash. Um, and he had a grooming salon called Super Dog. And it was funny because we were almost treated as if it wasn't a trade. And it's something I picked up on right away. And I always wondered. I said, well, everyone has pets. You know what? And nobody really knew what pet grooming was. But once I started doing it, you realized, well, all pets need this. And I knew it was going to grow. I'll tell you one thing I'm disappointed in, that it hasn't grown as quickly as the professional hair industry. But what I am seeing, and I do like it, and some of the groomers are going to hate me for saying this, I like to see some of the regulations that the state now or the states are putting in place or wanting to put in place as long as they work with the professionals to develop something that's going to work to keep people's pets safe. And it will legitimize our industry and make us you know, better professionals. Joe, I couldn't agree with you more on that. As a dog groomer myself over the past, you know, 34 years, thanks to you and John Nash of Nash Academy and everybody that worked there at the time, John Statsko, the names go on, Loretta Voigt. Listen, I couldn't agree with you more because, and I, I think that the industry, the professionals, like you said, really need to be the ones to be contacted, as opposed to having this overall government overseeing that doesn't know the industry, like guys like you and I and everyone else. Uh, Suzeko, who's been involved in this from day one, we really could need to regulate ourselves first and educate them. Do you agree? Well, nobody knows it better than we do. I mean, the general public really does not know what goes on behind the scenes of the grooming salon. And I always tell everyone, if you have a dog, see what goes on. And the groom is sugar-coated. I mean, dogs, you can, listen, I could buy a dog a steak dinner and a bottle of wine. That doesn't mean that he's going like to like it at the end of the day. But it's how the groomer handles sometimes the stress level, because the stress level in a salon could be extremely high, or it could be a great day. But however it is, you have to conduct yourself professionally. And the professionals that do are the ones that should be training the public and letting them understand that you know your pet is safe here and we know what's best yeah and i think that that's couldn't say it better with schools like nash i remember going there and within like the first week it was all about being sanitary it was all about being safe and we always say you know uh, people think that this is easy just because you buy yourself a pair of clippers from walmart doesn't make you a groomer you know what i'm saying there's so much more to it you have to know how to handle dogs and it's not for everybody 
Well, I agree with you there. I mean, I cringe when people want to go out and buy a home grooming kit, um, you know, clippers and all, and not know anything. At least, if nothing else, get on YouTube and watch somebody that knows what they're doing. The problem is, is you don't know who you're watching on these channels either for the general public. But you know what? Grooming schools are popping all over the place now. The industry is lucrative. It's a great career. If you're a pet lover, it's definitely something to check out. Yeah, we want to get young people involved too because it is a great career. I've been doing nothing but since I'm 19 years old, you know, thanks to you guys. Honestly, I, you know, I, I really... And you raised a family and have kids and everything on that, right? That's, That's right, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great trade. You can make some money. Yeah, yeah. And it's not always easy. I mean, it's a hard work. A lot of times you're doing stuff for nothing, you know, and in the beginning, you know, I was doing my neighbor's dogs for, you know, $20, you know, shaving them down. It took me three hours because I did, just didn't have the experience yet. So it's a skill that develops over time even to this day i'm still developing still learning it's a fine wine it takes time to develop it really is it does again we're just we're so happy that the industry is at least finally getting the recognition that it deserves through this through you guys putting this all together we really appreciate it joe everything you've done i mean you've been such a good friend you've been just a friend to the industry we really appreciate it guys joey Villani, give it up for a man this guy is like my hero without him honestly i wouldn't be grooming today so i really do owe you I a lot even, i didn't even pay you to say that no, you're, you're not, thanks not, man not at all. love you sick. and it's really good to see you. Love you you too. Hey, Joe, real quick before we go, if anybody wants to get in touch with you or anything, where can they find you? Or Joey at worldexpo.dog. There you have it, guys. Yeah. that's Joey, worldexpo.dog. There you go, man. Thank you very much. We're going to take a quick break right now, so stay tuned for more on Groomer Humor. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Michelle Fern here, host of Best Bets for Pets and dog mom to two gorgeous pooches. And I found a way to make them happy every month. Bark Box. It's a party in the box for your pooches filled with toys and treats they will love. We have a special for you that you are going to love too. This is for all the pet parents. Visit BarkBox.com slash PetLife and subscribe to a 6 or 12 month plan and get a month for free. How great is that? Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Hey guys, here we are once again, World Dog Expo. We're here with the legendary Shorty Rossi Animal Planet's pit boss right here with you guys. Shorty, you having a good time, man? Yeah, I'm having a great time. It's uh, better than last year. A lot more people is finally dying down, which is a good thing. Yeah. So, Shorty, what are you working on currently, man? Um, right now, I'm doing my tour schedule around uh, the U.S. and Latin America. We're in talks of writing a second book. We're working on another program to see if we can get it back on air. Somebody the same thing. And also, I'm in the cigar business, so we're doing our cigar thing across Latin America. Really? Cigars, man? I love cigars, dude. Yeah, you got to give me one when you get it going. What was the first? Was that, um, it's not about the pit bull? What, what is that? Book? Yeah. The book is more the part two of Four Feet Tall and Rising. Okay. Because we went from, you know, when I was born until the, the peak of pit boss. Now people want to know what's after that. And we've been in the cigar business since 2010. Really? Does it have a name? The cigars? Yeah. yeah, they're diesel shorties. Okay. They're what they're called. They're from Nicaragua. Oh, really? Where can they get the cigars? Uh, cigarsinternational.com. Nice. nice. So. Shorty, real quick, for people that might not know, how did you get started in all this, man? It actually took 10 years for us to get a show. But I've been rescuing pit bulls since 2001 and been in the talent management since 2000. So, it, you know, you just wait for things to happen, and, you know, yeah. eventually they do. But yeah. a lot of people want things now and they give up yep. so you got to keep doing what you're doing and and you got to love what you do and obviously you do and we love what you do too shorty we really appreciate everything you're doing for these dogs you know it's amazing that we're here today yeah. doing this kind of stuff being able to celebrate it finally you know what i mean i i said everybody here is an artist you know and everybody here's a little crazy and i think we need to be crazy you agree yeah i'm a little <laughs> off the top myself so yeah we got to be a little crazy i heard you had a lot of fun last night too in new york 
Oh, yeah, we did. It was, yeah, we'll not go there, but yeah. <laughs> I will talk about that another time. All right, guys, Shorty Rossi, Animal Planet's Pit Boss. Hey, guys, so we are here at the World Dog Expo 2018 with the legendary world-renowned Sarah Carson. You might recognize her as a finalist on America's Got Talent and her little doggy hero here. So, Sarah, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us for a few minutes today. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. So the first question i got to have for you is, in a nutshell, how did you and Hero even acquire each other? <laughs> um, we were living in Canada together, and I found him online in a farm. And I was like, I think I want a Border Collie puppy. So I decided to take a leap of faith and get him, and here we are today. It's been, it's been an incredible adventure. Indeed it has. How long, would you say, does it even take to maybe teach one new trick? or like, How many hours can go into something like that? Yes, that's actually a really common question. It's really just five to ten minutes a day, but it's for the dog's entire life. So five to ten minutes a day for their entire life, that's, that's all it is. People think it's hours, and it's not. That's really, really amazing. We got a couple of clips of your performance earlier, and, and I just, I mean, I think I speak for everybody. When we, I think you agree with me, right, buddy? You're so cute. Do you have anything that you're working on currently that, we, that you want to tell everybody about or anything going on? Um, I do have a dog training app that was just released. It's called Pupper, P-U-P-P-R. It's on iOS and Android, and it's been a real hit so far, but uh, that's probably our most recent, our most recent endeavor, yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, Tara, that's really all I got. I really, really appreciate you coming on and taking a second to chat with us. And uh, just keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing is truly, truly amazing. You're an inspiration to everybody here, I think. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, everybody. We are here now with the one who made this all possible, the wonderful Alex Robertson. She was recently a guest on our show, Groomer Humor. So, Alex, it's just about wrapping up here almost. Uh, how are you holding up? I'm holding up. It's been a great show. It's been a two long days but it's been wonderful it's awesome yeah it, it was very hot yesterday we we spent a little while waiting for uh, hogs for paws to show up uh, we were baking in the sun having some fun hanging out with them that was great i have met so many uh, this is really this turnout was absolutely incredible i mean i mean how many uh, vendors were here did you say it was i think exact number was 125 companies yeah and i mean booth wise because some of them took you know more than one space there was 150 probably yeah wow so and a yeah so there's a ton and we've i mean sarah carson is here shorty rossi is here there's so many talented i mean how do you feel about how this is growing it only seems to be getting bigger yeah i feel great i feel like a huge confidence builder in all of this i mean everyone that has been here has been so great to work with i'm so you know, it's finding those um, new contacts and meeting new ones because we had so many people come up to us throughout the show saying, hey, I want to be a part of this. Like, what can I do? So it's awesome. Yeah, th yeah, it really is awesome. This is what what an amazing turnout. You, I bet you're really, really proud of yourself. I am proud of myself, but I'm proud of my team more than anything. So it takes more than just me, and um, everyone's really done well and put it all together yeah i've met a lot of your team we've met a lot of your team and there's just the whole thing is just you guys really pulled off an amazing successful expo here and i've had such a great time thank you so much for letting us be a part of it and cover it and come out and talk to all you guys and show everybody what's going on here because it's really only going to get bigger from here yeah. yeah thank you guys for coming because you guys have been amazing everyone has loved you and um, i really look forward to working with you both next year Absolutely, I can't wait. Is there anything else that you want to tell them that what's next for World Dog Expo coming up or anything like that? Or Watch for us for 2019 because we're coming. <laughs> Alex, thanks so much. Of course, thank you. All right, guys, that about does it. Thank you so much for stopping by on this very special episode. We've had so much fun here. We'd love to thank Todd and Alex, Joey, everybody at Barkley Productions for having us. We'd also like to thank our producer, Mark. Thank you so much, Mark. This was such an amazing experience. We got a chance to talk to so many people. It was just absolutely amazing. Uh, if you haven't done so already, head on over to our YouTube channel. It's called Grooming by Rudy. That's Grooming by Rudy on YouTube.com. Leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe. We want to hear from you guys. You could also like Grooming by Rudy on Facebook. Follow Grooming by Rudy on Instagram. It has been an absolute pleasure, guys. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with us. Until next time, take care of yourselves and your pets. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.